It is a pleasure and an honor to welcome our next guest, one of the 50 greatest NBA players of all time, a member of the Pro Basketball Hall of Fame. He, along with Bill Russell and company, had that run where they won eight straight championships, and he won 10 championships in his 12-year career. He is Sam Jones, and he's joining Rick Barry and Nate Archibald and Phil Chenier. Coming to Boat Campers in Naples on Monday, March 16th, we'll give away tickets to that event and tell you how you can go in a moment. But first, Sam, thanks so much for your time. How are you this morning? Oh, good morning to both of you. I'm just feeling fine up here in St. Augustine. We got good weather, except just a little bit of rain. Well, the same here in southwest Florida, so we know how you feel, One of my favorite cities, great spot, and we're looking forward to having in our neck of the woods. Um, When when you saw, you know, Sam, we just had the Kobe Memorial, and, and we've seen this unbelievable outpouring of stories and in support in the basketball community come together. Um, when you see Bill Russell putting on a Kobe Jersey, what does that tell you of Kobe's impact on the game? Well, what people don't realize is that Russell and Kobe were very, very good friends. And I thought it was one of the greatest things that could happen because we knew what he did, uh, very successful, coming out of high school at 18 years old and lasting for 20 years as, uh, as, and being what he was. I thought it was great, and I think it was a great honor to have the man who won the most championships, 11 and 13 years, to wear and come there for Kobe Bryant and his family. Sam, can you imagine... Could you have played in the NBA coming out of high school? I mean, you know, you were 6'4", which back in the you know early to mid-50s there, I mean, you're a big guard. And obviously, <laughs> you know, and obviously you're one of the 50 greatest players of all time. And, and so, you know, I mean, <laughs> you were really good. But would you have been ready to play in the NBA coming out of high school? No, I don't even think about it. In fact, I never thought about playing in the NBA. What people don't know is that I never saw a game until I played in the NBA. I didn't know anybody that was playing professional basketball. And to be drafted number one in the first round by the Boston Celtics from a Division II school, it's unheard of. It scared me to death. I mean, I was petrified, and I'm graduated from college. I had two years in the Army before I went to the Celtics, and I'm graduating from college, and I'm petrified to be drafted by the team who had just won their first world's championship. I wanted to go someplace else. <laughs> I thought I would have a better chance. What was playing in Boston like then? Because we know, you know, the microscope's pretty tough on any Boston athlete. Was it as much so in your day or more so? Well, first of all, you got to realize I'm from the South. Right. I, I, know, I know what segregation is. I expected more by going north because I had never been to Boston in my life. And I really expected more from those people, but I found out I was never called any bad names in Boston the whole time I was there. Uh, it could be luck. I don't know all the way I am. I'm just a person. I'm a people's person. And so I got along with everybody. And if somebody didn't like me, well, that's their problem. That's not my problem. And I was married when I went there, and my wife was very, very light-skinned. In fact, she could have passed for white coming out of North Carolina, they should have known that they didn't allow, they did allow uh, mixed marriages. But a lot of people don't know about history. So, but I still got along fine, so I, was, I love Boston. And the only reason I left Boston is because of the weather. That was the only reason, <laughs> but no. Well, we, I, I, I know a few of those all around here right, right now, Sam. You're not the first guy that left Boston to come to Florida because of the weather. Right. And I love, I love, I love, I love, I live in St. Augustine. It's a little bit chilly up here, but I love the whole state of Florida. I'm 86 years old, and I don't want to leave it. 
He's Sam Jones, won NBA, 10 NBA championships during his legendary 12-year career. He's joining Rick Barry, Nate Archibald, Phil Chenier, uh, and it's a legendary event. It's called Meet the Legends, and it's at Bo Campers in Naples. It's two weeks from Monday. It is March 16th, so it's the day after Selection Sunday. Easy for you to remember on your mental calendar. <laughs> you can go to NaplesAllStarEvents.com, NaplesAllStarEvents.com for more information and for tickets, and we will give away some tickets coming up in just a bit. Um, were you there for the legendary story, and you know, is it true that you guys are practicing hard and Russell's sitting in the stands of the garden with his legs hanging over some seats reading the paper and uh, the practice isn't going well and our back blows the whistle and you guys come over and he asks what's going on and somebody says, well, you know, we're running and then Russell's sitting there reading the paper and Red calls Russell over and basically says to all of you, he's Bill Russell. He plays by different rules. Bill, go back to reading the paper. Now, you guy, you got to keep running sprints. <laughs> I love the way you say that. Listen, Russell did not like to practice. <laughs> but the one thing I can say about Bill Russell, he never missed a practice. And why he was reading the paper is because when he went on the floor, he blocked every shot. <laughs> now, you can't block my jump shot 15 feet away from the basket. But he would not let the ball go in, so we had a turnover practice. Kuz is shooting the ball from 20 feet, and he wouldn't let the ball go in. So Red would take his butt off the court, put him on the sideline, and he would read the paper. <laughs> uh, no, and people, people may misjudge that. No, he came to practice every day. He didn't miss the practice. But he, by not liking the practice, he just mocked every shot. It was not right. We got angry with Russell. So we'd ask Red, get him out of here. We need to have a good practice. And so we did that for many, many years. It didn't bother me. It bothered me at first because I wanted to see him running like we did. Hey, you know, we always hear one of my favorite things that I found out after his career is how much Larry Bird talked to other players. In your day... How much talking was going on, and who was the best talker you played against? Truthfully, I was a trash talker. Nice. On my team, and I did it mostly to Wilt Chamberlain because he was a friend of mine, and he was always coming out too late, and I would always, I'd take my jump shot and say, too late, Wilt, right in his face, but I didn't point my finger at him because I thought he could have been the best player to ever don on an NBA uniform. That's how good he was at 7'2", quick, fast, did anything that he wanted to do, average 50 points a ball game in a year. Uh, the guy was tremendous. But Larry Bird was more of a trash talker than anybody that I know. And he did it in a certain way to let you know that you can't play me. I'm one of the best on the floor. And I think it put fear in some of the guys. I really did, and especially when he did those three-point shots uh, during the NBA All-Star game. He would come in and say, okay, guys, I should be able to place this so some of you can finish in second place. And so that's a trash talker. Now, on anybody else's team, uh, Dick Barnett, which people don't know about, he came from Tennessee State. He was another trash talker, and he played with the Knicks and he played with the uh, Lakers, so he played with two great teams. But uh, he could talk some trash, too. Sam Jones, legendary NBA player with the Celtics, won 10 NBA championships. Only Bill Russell won more. He'll be part of Meet the Legends two weeks from Monday in Naples. Do you like the way the game is played today with your skill set I mean, you would have thrived in any era, but, I mean, your numbers today, you know, might be obscene. But I'm just curious, do you like the way the game is played today? There are some things I don't like. Uh, I don't like the way they can carry that ball and get away with it with two or three steps. But I guess that the LeBron James and 
the others can get away with it because this is what the fans want to see. And taking away nothing, LeBron James is a great player. And there's a lot of great players out there that's playing the game today. Embiid, uh, Giannis, uh, they're just great players I like to watch. But the team that I love to watch when they were together were the Golden State Warriors. I thought they had the I thought they had everything that you needed to win championships until that team was broken up. The other team was uh, the Spurs. I like the way they played the game. They played together. Uh, There were no selfish players on the team. And it's so hard to stay together with what they're paying today. But had the Warriors stayed together and had been healthy, I think they could have made a great run at a hard record. When you watch, the one thing I thought about the game is that, you know, you were a guy that used the glass and used it really well. And I, when you said the Spurs, I could immediately think you probably really liked the Tim Duncan because I he- certainly did. You just stopped right there. I, yes, I did. I, I don't know why you would say that, but Tim Duncan reminded me of me shooting when he could kiss that ball off the backboard the way he did. You're, you're on time with that. That's right. That's the only one that I could think about. I, would, would you love? I mean. Would you love to get in the gym with some kids and just show them? Because I, I would imagine you could still probably shoot. You could go into a gym with a 12- or 13-year-old who's going to try to swish everything and show that young man that that glass can be your friend. Because kids well, don't, they don't do that. that. Except there was one exception. Everybody now wants to be a Stephon Curry. Everybody wants to shoot the threes, even the little kids. And I can't understand why we're not teaching these kids. First of all, let's start in closely. Let's be positive where we're making the baskets rather than starting off shooting threes. Uh, They want to dribble between the legs and behind the back. This is what they're seeing on TV. And this is what they want to see. That's why I like one of the greatest college coaches to ever coach basketball, and that was John Wooden at UCLA and won all those national titles, and he had all of his kids in practice to shoot off the backboard at every practice. And if coaches don't do that, the kids are not going to do it, and they're not going to learn how to do it. But you hit the right spot. I would love to take young kids, kids who are, 10 and 11 and 12 years old. Take them in a gym and show them just why they should do it, and it's a much easier shot. And Walton used the glass a lot throughout his career, and you could see that went all the way back to his days with Wooden and UCLA. <laughs> and not only that, he was a, he was a tremendous ball player. Yeah. <laughs> this is one kid that, had he not hurt his foot, I thought he was the greatest passing center to ever come into the NBA. Plus, he could score, and he could play defense. And I think that his uh, breaking his foot had a lot to do with him not being one of the top five centers to ever play the game. Sam, when I, you know, I'm looking at the time you played it, and, you know, obviously, you know, Boston was so good, and, I think the Boston players all received their proper accolades. It seems that in today's world with Russ Westbrook doing what he's doing and the emphasis on the triple double. Now we talk about Oscar Robinson more, but he's a guy that we don't have video from. He played in an era where we just don't have a lot. Um, Is he, is he a guy that you look at? I mean, would he be the most underrated player? And I know he's thought of as a great player, but he seems to be the most forgotten player of your era is what what was it about Oscar that was so tough to play against? Uh, what did you think he did best? Well, first of all, he was 6'5". He was built almost like Bron J- uh, LeBron James. Uh, he had a tremendous shot that was hard to block because I went, with, I went against him so many times about eight years out of his career. And... He reminded me a lot of uh, smaller Bill Russell. He hated to lose, 
And the one thing about Oscar, and I look at Magic, I look at Magic Johnson, I look at Michael Jordan. One thing about Oscar, he made everybody around him better basketball players, and he came out every night with the idea of we are going to win, and if you have to get on my back, I'm going to carry you all the way, even at six five, but a big six five. And he could pass. He saw the whole court, and he was tough to play. Uh, he could back you in, take a jump shot. He had a slight fadeaway like Kobe, but Kobe had a better fadeaway because he could jump higher. But playing Oscar was like having a headache every day. <laughs> <laughs> because you really didn't want to play him. I'll tell you this right now. I remember one night Red Auerbach telling me, you got Oscar Robinson. And uh, I got nervous at the time. And then when I got on the floor, I told Casey Jones, you got Oscar Robinson. <laughs> and and, and Red, Red, Red didn't understand that. And I, he says, didn't I tell you, Sam, that you had Oscar Robinson? I said, no, Coach. You had It was the other Jones boy. <laughs> <laughs> that that bothered him for a while, but I didn't want to play it. <laughs> uh, Sam Jones won 10 NBA championships during his 12-year career, all with the Boston Celtics. And Sam is joining Rick Barry, Nate Archibald, Phil Chenier at the Meet the Legends event. It's in a little less than three weeks, Monday, March 16th at Bo Campers in Naples. We'll be giving away tickets shortly. You can get your tickets and all the information for the event at Naples All-Star Events. Dot com. Sam, this was a thrill for us. I uh, hope it was worth your time. Safe travels. Look forward to meeting you in less than three weeks. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Sam Jones, legendary Hall of Famer. Only Bill Russell won more championships because, well, he played one more year. That was fun. Yeah, he that really was. was. He uh, born and he's the first great player born in Wilmington, North right. Carolina. Everybody thinks about Michael. Sam came first. Drafted by the Minneapolis Lakers. Much like, you know, Red Arbach is just a flipping genius on a few different levels. He got bird because of some quirk right. that he figured out and drafted him a year early. Right. Knew that he was eligible when nobody he had played, figured it out. Right, because he went to Indiana that one year that put him in the eligibility. Well, he... Sam was drafted by the Lakers, but he went back to get his degree and played one more year. And Arbach, dra Arbach drafted him, never having seen him play. Went to North Carolina to talk to a North Carolina guy and a Wake Forest guy and was told the best player in the state's about 10 miles away. At North Carolina Central, which, as Sam mentioned, was a D2 school then, is a small D1 school. FGCU played him a few times. I did a game, actually. From their gym. It's in Raleigh, right? And uh, a little south, I believe. Okay, I know there's... Uh, but, no, you might be... Or Durham, or one or the other, yes. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a little nook and cranny, if you will. Yes. It's, it's a little nook and cranny. And um, they've had a good run here. I think Lawrence Moten, their head coach... You're right, it's in Durham. The, ...taking them to the tournament uh, quite a few times in the last 10 years. They play a slowdown style. But it's one of the historically black colleges, yep. and, and uh, that. But that was that was fun. I, that's one when you get to go back in the time machine and listen to Sam Jones tell stories about Russell and Cousy and Wilt and Oscar Robinson. That's played uh, college ball in the mid '50s, and obviously, you know, the North Carolinas and the Wake Forest of the world were not recruiting Sam Jones yet. It would be another ten or so years before someone like Sam Jones would even be recruited by the quote unquote big boys, and that's why he went to a D two North Carolina Central. From Sam Jones to Seth Everett. Wow. He's gonna have to deliver that's today. I don't big, know if you realize it. It's a big but step down. <laughs> it, really, it really is. It really is. Uh, until We're sorry. Then, yeah. That's, 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 <laughs> oh, that's so sorry. rotten. I'm uh, sorry, Seth. <laughs> that's so rotten. Seth comes on for free. That was very mean. It's so Seth's first appearance since I yelled at him last time. Right. <laughs> and you're going to have to tell the story off air about what took place after the show last week. But until then, all right, do you want to win tickets to the uh, Meet the Legends event at Bo Campers in Naples, Monday, March 16th? How about we give away a couple pairs? I think it's a great idea. 
249-8167 is the number to call, 249-8167. First and second caller, pair of tickets. Uh, if you can't go, please don't call in and win, or at the very least, give the tickets away. We'd like to see a full house for the Meet the Legends event. I think Sam and Rick Barry and Nate Archibald and Phil Chenier deserve that. Monday, March 16th, 249-8167 to win your tickets. Otherwise, you can go to NaplesAllStarEvents.com.